Hi, everybody. This is Life and Vibe, or an avatar. And today we have a really great YouTube creator who's going to be coming into our health clinic here in this little corner of the YouTube world. And we're going to see what we think may potentially be going on with this creator. And today, the springboard for our conversation, the platform that we shall be using to talk about health today is no other than our one, our only, our favorite, yes, foodie booty, Miss Chantel herself. And she recently has visited a clinic in Kuwait to find out about what's causing her sciatic nerve pain. And so I actually am a nurse practitioner in training. I am currently over a year in grad school, starting to be an acute care adult gerontology nurse practitioner. And so I could potentially get somebody like Miss Chantel showing up into the emergency room with these complaints of pain. And so I'm kind of using this as a case scenario to see what is going on with our favorite and our beloved Miss Chantel today. And so I also want to let everyone know I am licensed as a registered nurse here in the United States. So I'll be using a combination of my actual nurse licensure, which I will be using for pain assessment of this young lady and for my sort of assessment of what could be a potential diagnosis for this young lady. I will be using my current uh, time in grad school. So if you do like this type of content, then I hope that you will continue watching. And if you want to find out what I believe is wrong with Miss Chantel today, then I can say, please continue watching this video. Uh, it's not going to be long until we start talking about what might actually be going on with her. And I think I have a pretty good idea. And so we're going to have a little bit of fun with this. It's all in a little bit of tongue in cheek. And so I'm going to read my phrase of the day. Uh, just to get everybody a little bit of inspiration here from their nurse here over on this side of the web. It says, nothing is a waste of time if you use the experience wisely. And that's from Auguste Rodin. And I hope I pronounced that correctly. And I hope I'm using my experience today wisely to get this conversation going about this young lady. And I got quite a lot of interesting things prepared. So just hang in here. Uh, she had an avatar out. I'm going to bring out my little nurse avatar, but I do want to get a couple of little disclaimers out here first, just to let you know that obviously any of the content I'm going to be using from the creator is just under the fair use. And always want to say that this video is just for entertainment purposes only. Again, it's just my opinion. It's commentary, a little bit of roasting. Maybe if I get there, it could be if she goes off, maybe not. I might get sarcastic. And we know that's the lowest form of wit. But, you know, I really don't have any personal dislike to this person. Uh, bullying or hatred is not supported on this channel. And we don't go, you know, against anything. We don't like hateful comments. Hateful comments will be removed. Um, funny ones I always love. But please, please do not be hateful. And then lastly, just, you know, for anybody who potentially finds topics around just anything around health, and I never know if Foodie Beauty is going to go off about her mental health or her, you know, potential, you know, EDs or whatever. So just, you know, I just want to, everyone to be there and aware. And if those topics are sensitive for you, just, you know, click on out of the way. That's okay. I don't feel too insulted if you got this fault. That's all right. You know, or you can, you know, just, just, you know, you take care of you today. Give yourself a warm hug from me. All right. So first thing we want to do is just, you know, let's add Let's uh, add her to the stage, because I know everybody's waiting for her, is Miss Foodie Beauty. There she is, Miss Chantel Ray. Hello, hello, Chantel. How are you feeling today? Tell me, tell me, how are you feeling? Tell me a little bit about yourself. The content I'm most comfortable making with my Bed Bound series, and I'm not joking, I literally, okay, so what I'm going to start with first is health updates. So, um... A regular schedule. Yeah, that's true. So a podcast will have a regular schedule and 
can be anything. <laughs> I'm doing a butt day sitting on it. <laughs> Hi, co-gamer. This is rad, right? Uh, right. Uh, uh, streaming app is called Streamlabs. Okay. So, um, so health updates. So I, today, the Celebrex. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Um, I'm a little bit confused there because she was about to tell me her health updates. And then she just, uh, Chantel, you just kind of drifted off there. Is, is there somebody else in the room with us as we're doing this assessment? I just want to make sure. Is there, is this, is, is somebody else in the room with us? All right. All right. Okay. I guess nobody else in the room. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. I get it. Okay. All right. So, all right. Well, I'll let you uh, keep talking about your health updates then if there's, there's nobody else in the room. Um, but I did need to get a couple of things, uh, first, just, I need to know, uh, just your weight, your height and your age. If I could just get that information real false, please. That's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll get the other, uh, we'll get those, um, your blood pressure and your weight and your height and everything in a minute. So let's, let's just get on with this assessment, shall we? Tell me a little bit about what's been going on. Was not working. Okay. So at all, my pain is increasing and now I have numbness all down my leg. Like I can't feel a lot of my whole leg. It's like really, it's numb. Okay. So I somehow in the most excruciating pain, Hey, Jessica, Hi. <laughs> Here's Chantel. <laughs> Don't assume it's sciatica only. Well, no, I'm I'm gonna have to have like other tests done. But for now, um All right, do you keep wondering if you have any other people there in the room with you? Are you on your phone? Uh, I'm just trying to get a health assessment here from you. And uh, I have a fear that we're actually getting um, your, um, can, uh, I just, I, I would like, uh, obviously, just for you to concentrate if you can. Thank you. Thank you. That'd be great. Thank you. All right. Uh, just need to know a little bit more about this pain, please. What we're trying is, I somehow got my butt to the clinic. Um, I was like, bismillah, bismillah, you know, the whole way, like, just please god help me i was in so much pain i had to get dressed in stages i had to like first roll off the bed that was painful go to the washroom which is torture um then i had to put my pants on lay down let the pain subside a bit get up and i i just i hate this because you know i told salah i'm like there is my hijab fell on the floor and i cannot bend to pick it up i had to wait for him to come home and get me get the hijab off the floor and uh, you know it's not fun okay so um so i get to the the clinic all right you can you know just keep on being so i'm i'm, I'm kind of hearing here that you rolled off the bed and that you you managed to get yourself to the clinic but you and you're so far taking celebrex and so that is a sort of NSAID. Uh, I know that is often NSAIDs are prescribed along with this particular syndrome that I think Chantel may be experiencing. But she's talking about the fact that she's rolling off the bed. Uh, she can barely put her clothes on. There's a lot of people who doubt that she went anywhere. I do actually believe that she is experiencing this syndrome. Uh, she's just a really poor historian and narrative uh, person <laughs> to do anything about her medical health. She just doesn't really give very good on either. Um, so, yeah, not to use all the medical technical terms. Okay, so let's keep her describing this and, uh, you know, let's because then I want to get into what she, she potentially has. And I, I've heard people, you know, like commenting that, uh, people assuming that I'm going to run, you know, I, I make fun of Canada all the time. Um, I don't make fun of Canada. Okay. Every country has its pros and cons. Um, doesn't mean that Canada's perfect. And it doesn't mean that, you know, that's not what I, what I say when I say I don't want to live in Canada, but okay. I think that I'm going to run back to Canada and, and take advantage of the healthcare and be a burden on the system. But no, I have a visa here. You know, people don't believe that, but I have a visa here 
and I'm able to access healthcare. So for very cheap healthcare. So like the entire treatment I'm on, the entire visit was like 2KD. Okay. Which is like pretty, that's what expats pay. So, um, I, they're all a descriptive for pain. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I, I have said that she is a burden on the healthcare system to Canada. If you're not paying your taxes and you're not taking care of your health, then yeah, that would literally be a burden on their healthcare system. But, but you rock off girl, you keep going on, but stay on, stay, stay focused on the conversation that we're supposed to be having about your health, please. Cause you're, you're all over the place. And I'm trying to get your details. Thank you. What happened was I went to the clinic okay. and, um, I, I was in tears. Like I couldn't hold it in. I was, this pain brings me to tears like a baby. Okay. Um, Tizzy Dawn, I'm going to touch on that after. That's one of the things I'm going to talk about. Um, so this looks ridiculous. Well, would you expect my attempt at a podcast to be any different? Like <laughs> it's my first one. Go easy on me. Okay. So podcast, um, they, how are we in the middle of a podcast? If we're supposed to be here doing your health history, Chantel, that's so unfair to my time here. Do not multitask like that. So anyway, uh, just to kind of give an idea about what she's talking about with her pain. Um, one of the things as a nurse, and I'm just going to bring this up real quick. I wanted to share one of the assessment tools that we use as an RN. And then what I think, uh, may be going on with Chantel. So when, as a nurse, we do get a lot of people coming in and just telling us about their pain. And we ask a lot of questions about people's pain and people often get annoyed. Like you were asking us so many questions about pain. Well, it's because it's a subjective self-reported narrative by the patient. So we need to use some type of method in order to kind of assess and gather this information. And this acronym is what we used in order to remember all the different things that we have. So the P is for what's known as provocation or palliation. I'm going to make this real quick. The Q is about, which is like, what relieves it? What makes it worse? You know, we kind of ask those types of questions. And Chantel will, you know, is talking a little bit about rolling out of bed and so forth. She's talked about using Celebrex. She talks about just the pain and not being able to really get up. And it kind of brings me to what I think she may be potentially having at this time. Uh, the quality and the quantity, you know, is it throbbing? Is it soft? I think she's used words like throbbing in the past. It's like region of radiation. Where is it located? Where does it go to? So she talks about starting up in the back of her buttock kind of working its way down. Severity, you know, we'd actually literally say, and she never sort of gives us a scale out of 10, I think, ever. But I would ask her out of 10, what, what, what is your pain like? And then timing, how long is it lasting? When did it come on? And just like multiple questions about onset, continuity. Is it continuous? Is it intermittent? I mean, there's so, there's a thousand questions here. And so it does take some time to actually really, especially when that is the primary concern of the patient coming in is pain in a location radiating somewhere we have to try to figure out what is going on with that pain and that's kind of as a nurse what we would use and using this method enables us to have a way to actually document and get maybe some information that sort of pinpoints us we also do look at the patient physically we would look at for grimacing on the face are they guarding anywhere certain measurements of blood pressure, heart rate, they can also be indicative of whether the person is in pain. So there is a little bit of objective information that we can get that would lead us to think that, yes, the patient probably is in pain, but it is very self-reported. So whatever the patient comes in telling us their pain is, that's what we have to believe the pain is. But we try to get them to understand the zero to 10 scale a little bit. Some people, you know, everybody feels pain differently. And that's what, as practitioners, we always have to understand. So what potentially, you know, could be going on with Chantel? Well, she, she, she's, I'm going to let her talk and see if she starts talking about where the pain is coming from. And so just kind of think of that PR, PQRST as we go along with Chantel here. Um, they, he just looked at me and like, you know, I must've looked pitiful. <laughs> and 
he wrote a prescription like right away. So basically everything is done in that same area. It's like a clinic hospital kind of thing. And I had to go to the, to the, to the treatment station and, you know, a bunch of nurses. I was so almost delirious in pain. I didn't even really know what they were talking about. And I just like, I had to like, I couldn't even sit. It's more comfortable to stand and it's extremely painful to stand, but I cannot sit. So I stood up and kind of leaned against the gurney and they injected me with a needle as long as the sheet jabber bridge or as long as the wall of China. Hi, creepy. <laughs> into my right and into my left upper buttock like area. And uh, whatever it was, I don't know. <laughs> it instantly made my head light and my heart raced so bad I thought it was going to throw up. So maybe some kind of like in steroid. In I mean, I know when things are, you know, if somebody's going through pain, that it is difficult to remember, you know, what you're being told. But I would hope they gave you some type of discharge paperwork. And being a very advanced country like Kuwait would know to give you a English version for you to take home to read. Because I know we can do discharge instructions in a variety of different languages due to technology for our patients to take home here in the United States. So I, you know, I don't know if you just don't want to reveal I would, my tip here for anybody, as your your friendly, you, you know, life and vibe or an avatar would be to make sure that you fully understand the medications that you are being given, just to make sure first you're not allergic to them, because lo and behold, you have an allergic reaction to something that could be potentially fatal or, you know, very injurious. So that would be my first concern hearing her say that. Secondly to know what interactions you could possibly have from the medication that would need to be immediately reported to your doctor because they were not normal. You know, three, just to know kind of what to expect from the medication. Is it going to leave you feeling painful in that area? I would think so. If you had an intramuscular injection, usually anything intramuscular can often be quite painful. Uh, I would want to know how long would this medication last for? Is there a follow-up? You know, what are my do's and don'ts? Is there anything I can or can't eat now that I'm on this medication? Are there restrictions to activities that I need to know about? I have so many questions. <laughs> but that's what I would want to know anyway. Let's get back to uh, Chantel. And like I said, I think I know what's going on with her into it because she's about to say where she's getting her injection. Oh, I'm going to let you know what I think she has. Injection is what I'm guessing. Um, I like amputation. I don't know. Hi, Beezer girl. So this is the pain meds they're giving me is this injection. So I have to go every day for now for the next few days to get this injection. And also I have to take this cocktail of vitamins and I think it's like B12 and something else. So part of the treatment is vitamins. So, um, yeah, I haven't been like officially diagnosed, but I told the doctor my symptoms. I said, I, I talked to another doctor, they suggested Celebrex, but I'm probably going to have to get imaging done. You know, they're going to try this for now. Like the, right now the pain management, I, I really can only go to the clinic and lay down. I don't even know if I could get an x-ray right now. I, I can't, like I had to be wheelchaired back to the car. I thought I was going to pass out. It was so bad. It was so freaking bad. So I don't wish this pain on anyone, not even the people whose guts I hate on this platform. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hello, Blush. Hi, everybody. I missed here. Hi. Hi, Mike. <laughs> I like your disco stew. Okay. Uh, so I don't want Chantel to rage off too much there because we know Chantel will get a rager on. So we're going to address the... The injection, which she thinks is a pain med, I think it's actually a steroid, quote unquote, steroid anti inflammatory medication. Uh, the B12 cocktails, that's not unusual to have like B12 injections, especially when it comes to like neuromuscular things. Uh, and so that's, or I have had patients who've had to have higher doses of B12 in order to treat certain conditions. And so that is not unheard of either. So she talks about being uncomfortable to sit and she wants to stand up and she wants, but she still can't walk. So this is kind of still leading me to what I believe Chantel may have. And so let's get into that. So 
Chantel was receiving uh, injections into her buttock region. And it, she's also talked about having a lot of sciatic nerve pain and having sciatica. But I do not believe the condition that Chantel has is sciatica in my uh, just assessment of her and what she is describing to me at the moment. And just some of the lifestyle factors that Chantel has and just a lot of this. And this is what I think is potentially going on. So let's take a little peek. See here, this is this is what I think Chantel has. Okay, this muscle here is what is known as the piriformis muscle, sitting right here, deep inside the gluteal area, and it often is a muscle that, if it becomes inflamed at all it could actually start to compress onto that sciatic nerve. And the nerve, obviously, is running right here. So you see here, got our sciatic nerve running all the way down the back of the leg. And we have what's known as this piriformis muscle that sits right at the top of her sciatic nerve. And it can get inflamed and compress onto that. So there's that particular area. And I'm sorry if I cut Chantel off on the last one, but I'm going to make sure I present all of these. So just, <laughs> all right. So the next thing I want to show, because we're going to show this um, as we hear Chantel talk. And I kind of, you know, I'm going to try to do my best to share between the two screens um, because this screen is not particularly exciting. Um, but I think it explains a lot about what is going on with Miss Chantel here. Okay, let me make me small so you guys can look at this better. That's better. Okay, so what this is, and I will leave the link below, is the what's known as piriformis syndrome. <laughs> and this is what I actually think is happening with Chantel. So this actually is a syndrome that happens when the sciatic nerve becomes entrapped at the level of the ischial tuberosity, um, just to be on the really fancy side. Now, there's lots of things that can bring this along, but it's Clinical presentation, they say here, is fairly consistent. The patients often report pain in the gluteal region that is characterized as shooting, burning, or aching down the back of the leg. In addition, numbness in the buttocks, which is complete tingling sensations along the distribution of the sciatic nerve, is not uncommon. Okay, so what is this? What? Who gets this? Okay, so there's lots of different things that potentially can cause this piriformis syndrome. And it is that this sciatic nerve uh, runs adjacent to the piriformis muscle, which functions as the external rotator of the hip. And then every time the piriformis is then irritated or inflamed, it then affects the sciatic nerve. And this means that it gets a sciatic-like pain, Miss Sciatica. It's not an easy diagnosis, um, but it is based on the clinical history and the presentation. As I said, I am not diagnosing Chantelle at this time, but this seems a very uh, potentially what they also suspected she may be having. Um, it can it mimic other symptoms um, such as lumbar canal stenosis, disc inflammation, or other pelvic causes. Okay, but it just the way she describes it, it seems really, really close. So what happens here in the piriformis? So what happens here is, and I, gosh, let me see. I, I don't know why I changed my audio over. I did. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. So it basically, it is, you know, you've got this sciatic nerve entrapment. It's anterior to this muscle and it is caused by stress due to poor body mechanics in a chronic condition or acute injury. Okay. And there's all sorts of anatomical anomalies and all sorts of different things that can contribute to compression and all sorts of different things. But some of the causes of this particular disorder or syndrome is sitting for prolonged periods. And they list people like taxi drivers, office workers, bicycle riders. And as we know, Chantel does sit for the majority of her day, I know she tries to get out with these recent walking videos, but for the majority of the time, Chantel is a very inactive person and spends the majority of her day sitting. In fact, she is so comfortable at sitting, she sat for 12 hours without moving very recently 
on a plane journey. And so there's been a lot of hypotheses about things that potentially could be happening. And I think based on what we're about to go over here, this is potentially, in my mind, what is the closest thing that could be happening to her. And based on what they've been doing for her treatment as well. Okay. And the fact that, Chantelle, you're only going to be able to have a couple of days of bed rest. Okay, that's it. And then you're back on your feet, girl. You can't milk this out for long. All right. So let's keep going on through here. So we're going to keep going through this and then maybe we'll let her finish out and then I'll finish out this video. But yeah, I think this is what's going on. <laughs> okay. So how does this happen? I, for her, that's that's pretty, pretty much it. Okay. Sydney. So it's responsible for about 0.3% of 6% of cases of all low back pain and or slash sciatica. Uh, with the estimated amount of new cases of low back pain and sciatica at 40 million annually, uh, the incidence of periformis syndrome would be roughly 2.4 million folks per year. Uh, and it's usually with middle-aged patients like a 40-year-old Chantel uh, with reported ratio of male-to-female patients being equally affected. So it's, 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 not, it's not picky and choosy on agenda in here. Okay, and then we're, it talks about the muscle here. Okay, so what kind of happens with the history and physical? Because that's kind of what I said about Chantel today and what could potentially be going on here. Okay, so here, you know, it could be, this is how they would come into the clinic. And I think this is pretty close to how Chantel describes her visit. Chronic pain in the buttocks and hip area. Pain when getting out of bed. Remember when she talked about you know, how difficult she had to roll out of the bed, okay? She mentioned that very clearly. She said inability to sit for a prolonged time. She just mentioned that she was uncomfortable sitting and it, she felt better when she stood up. Then she talks about pain in the buttocks that is worsened by hip movements. So having to, she's okay just standing, but obviously using her hips and having to walk is probably quite uncomfortable at this very moment of time. And so be, she had to get wheelchaired out to the core because, you know, that's very painful. And so it says here, and like I said, I'll put this link down below, National Institutes of Health, this is qualified information. Uh, patients will often present with symptoms of sciatica. It can often be difficult to differentiate the origin of the radicular pain secondary to the spinal stenosis versus the pitiformis syndrome. Um, so, and if, if they did some, you know, x-rays of her spine, they may be potentially able to see if she had any spinal stenosis going on. Um, but they, you know, they do want to make sure they can rule that out. Uh, it could radiate into the back of the thigh, but at times it may also occur in the lower leg. Uh, patient may also complain of buttock pain, you know, all of these different things. Okay. They're going to do this big old test called the fair test to do a evaluation and diagnosis of her and it's called the fair test because they're going to get her doing all this flexion all this different movement all of these different things are going to be the things that they're going to recommend for Chantel to do okay now I'm not making fun of anybody here I know everyone likes all the drama the tease but this is really what I believe could potentially be happening here so this is more anybody interested into the medical content this is what we're looking here um, with Chantel. It's like literally she's got a sit sitting syndrome. Okay. So, so there's all these other different disorders that do need to be ruled out, herniated disc, you know, lumbar muscle strain, spinal stenosis, you know, all these different things. So she is going to need to be further evaluated. So in the short term, what will be her treatment? She's only supposed to have short term rest. Two days, 48 hours, Chantel, and I think your clock has been ticking. The use of muscle relaxants, something like Flexorel. She could get an inset. She's talked about having used Celebrex, which is therapeutically under the inset class, so it is a COX-2 inhibitor. Physical therapy, which entails stretching the piriformis muscle, range of motion exercises, and deep tissue massages. In some patients, and this obviously is in Chantel's case, injection of steroids, and you're welcome for me helping you know what your medication is, around the periformis muscle may help decrease the inflammation and pain. Okay, so in some things, they've also used some Botox in that area. 
So, but if, you know, that is not, you know, help decrease that and it continues to persist, then obviously surgery would be the last thing they would need to consider for her. And that's only if all of these other conservative therapy, which means physical exercise, are not working for her. They would then need to get into this other type of, you know, management, potentially surgical. Now, they will show some symptomatic improvement after a local, local trigger point injection, which is what I think Chantel had. And they're going to have to get some rehabilitative exercises. So Chantel is going to need to get some type of exercise here in order to improve her mobility and just hopefully, you know, managing some of the pain. Okay, so they are, you know, rehabilitation exercises and so forth um, if you get that done. But there are those who have to go to surgery and there's always, you know, risks that come along with that. Now, once it's made that diagnosis, and that's again, I'm saying I am not diagnosing Chantel, it's physical therapy now. So I'm hoping that instead of us hearing that Chantel is lying in the bed and ordering takeout, we're going to hear that Chantel is actually in a program with a physical therapist getting a good physical therapy program because she's had her two days of bed rest. And I think this is potentially what is going on with Chantel today, periformis syndrome. Anyway, I'm going to put the links all to this down below. If you do like this type of content, I do ask that you hit the likes, hit the subscribe. I did something a little bit different today. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this new type of just way of looking at different creators. I wanted to kind of bring my thing because I think there's been a lot of talk about what could be happening with her. And I kind of wanted to get a little bit of the medical misinformation out. I'm sorry if I skipped her at one point, I left the P Q R S T, but I think it's just her and the avatar. So anyway, take care, everybody be healthy. Do have good preventative care at your doctor's office and we'll see you later.